awesome. So I'm more than happy for you to unmute yourself and answer questions, uh, ask questions and stuff. Um, it's gonna, it's literally probably only gonna take us 30 minutes um, to go through everything. Um, so this is gonna be um, interpretation of um, chest x-ray. So both me and Liv, we've both um, been intercalating and urgent to the emergency care. It's the Plymouth course. Um, so we've been spending a lot of time in the A&E department um, and we see lots and lots of chest x-rays. Um, so over the past year, um, I've definitely picked up a, quite a few tricks and tips and I'm sure Liv has as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go through the A to E approach um, of how um, you should really be interpreting chest x-rays. Um, and we've got quite a few examples. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions um, as we go along, feel free to put in the chat or unmute yourself. I'm more than happy um, to stop and answer questions. All right. Okay, so you either in your OSCE or you're on a ward round and someone gives you a chest x-ray. What is the thir first thing you want to do when you get given a chest x-ray? Yeah, brilliant. So check patient's details. That's really important. You want to make sure that you've got the right patient. Um, and then you want to also look at the date and time that the film was taken, because there's no point looking at a film that was done a month ago unless you're going to compare it. Um, so that's the second thing that you might want to look out for as well, if there's been any previous um, imaging. So you want to make sure that you've got the right patient, it's the right time and date for the image that you want to be looking at, and then you can look to see if you've got any previous images uh, for comparison. All right. So to assess film quality of an x-ray, these are things that you want to be um, commenting on before you even delve into um, explaining what you can see on the x-ray. So the way that um, some people like to remember it is ripe. So that's rotation, inspiration, projection, and exposure. So how do we check that the x-ray um, has got the correct rotation? There's a big hint on the, on the pictures. Yep, so that's what this picture is indicating. So look at the clavicles. So the clavicles need to be equidistant from the spinous process. Now you could argue on this one that this film is actually a little bit rotated because the distance between the two lines um, indicated by X are a little bit shorter than the distance between the two lines indicated by Y. So you could argue that this um, X-ray is a little bit rotated. Another thing to mention as well, if you really want to show off, is that the spinous processes should be also um, vertically orientated. So they should be following a nice straight line all the way down the back. There shouldn't be any curvature unless you suspect that the patient's got um, any signs of scoliosis. Um, but that'd be a bit harsh for, you, for them to give you that in an OSCE. So how do we tell if uh, the patient has um, done the x-ray correctly in the inspiration phase? Because there's two phases that you can do in x-rays. There's inspiration and expiration. But for most chest x-rays, you want it in an inspiration phase. Yeah, and how many ribs do we count? Yeah, yeah, perfect. So yeah, it's five to six anterior ribs. Um, and the anterior ribs are the ones that curve. So these are your posterior ribs that you can see here that are normally more obvious. The anterior ribs are the ones that curve round. So you should be able to see six of those. So I think that there is there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and there's probably a seventh one down there that this film has been taken on an inspiration phase and it's, it's a good film um, in regards to inspiration because we can see six in anterior ribs. So the next one is, um, next thing that we need to uh, assess when we're looking at um, film quality is the projection of the film. So if the patient is well and they're able to walk around, they'll normally have the um, x-ray done in the PA view. So that basically means that the x-ray has been taken from the back. Um, and that's just, the, the, we prefer that view because you don't get any um, organomegaly, so it doesn't increase the size of the heart. However, um, if you've got a really poorly patient in recess, um, the majority of the time they won't bother um, weaving the patient around to x-ray. The x-ray will come to them and they'll use a the portal x-ray machine. And because it's a bit unfair to get these patients out of bed or it's just not possible, um, they'll be taking the x-ray from the front view and that's the, your AP view. Um, it can be difficult to sometimes, if, if it's not labelled on the x-ray, it can be difficult to tell if it's AP or PA. You should, ne you should never assume um, based on the heart size, just in case 
um, it is a PA view when they've got um, a large heart. Um, so, yeah, it's always worth an OSCE to um, comment if it does say PA or AP, and if it doesn't doesn't state it, you should either ask the examiner, is this a PA or an AP, or just say to the examiner, I can't tell if this is an AP or a PA. Um, and then last is exposure. So does anyone know how we test for exposure? Yeah, perfect. So um, vertebrae, vertebrae behind the heart. So um, uh, on this PowerPoint, it's, it's probably, um, I think if you saw this on a proper monitor, you can adjust, um, adjust it, you probably will be able to see the vertebrae behind the heart. You can just about see them. But yeah, so you want to see the vertebrae behind the heart. If they're hidden, um, then the x-ray is not exposed enough or, or it's overexposed. And then, um, you you know that um, anything that you might see is is might possibly be an artifact or something due to the exposure rather than actually be um, pathology. Have you got any tips or anything, Liv, or anything that you think I've missed? No, I think that was a really good explanation. Um, this this is the kind of stuff that I always forget, but like really kind of both in terms of getting those marks in the exam, but also just for real life, knowing how good the how good quality the x-ray is when you base your diagnosis is. Diagnoses? Diagnoses. Awesome. All right, so the best way to interpret x-rays is using the ABCDE approach and most like um, OSCE Star, Geeky Medics, all of them, they'll teach you this way and this is a way that the, um, especially Liverpool Medical School likes you to use and other medical schools will encourage you to use as well because it's a really systematic way of approaching x-rays. So the A for the ABCDE is the same as like um, your primary assessment that it, the A is airway. So what are the things that we need to be looking at in airway? Is the trachea central? Yeah, brilliant. So that's, that's a really, really nice, um, obvious one that they really like you to pick up on. So do you think this um, trachea is central? Or do you think it's deviated? What, what would you think on, on this? Considering that we've got this nice circle that's indicating some pathology down in the um, left lower zone of the lung. Looks like it might be deviated to the right. Yeah, so it's slightly, yeah, it is, it's slightly deviated to the right. And that's because we've got a large pleural fusion on the um, left lower zone. So when you see um, trachea deviation, there's a couple of things that you want to be thinking. Um, and normally you'll be able to see the pathology in the lung fields that's indicating why the um, trachea is deviated. So if you've got a pushing of the trachea, which is in this case, the trachea is being pushed slightly to the right, it can be pushed by either a large pleural effusion, which is what we've got here, or a tension pneumothorax. If you've got pulling of the trachea, um, that's normally due to um, consolidation and due to a low bar collapse. Um, So there's other things that you can mention um, about airway. So you can mention whether Carina bifurcates. Um, and on a good quality X-ray, you should be able to see the uh, Carina bifurcating. And then the other things that you might be able to mention as well um, as part of airway is the um, high loss structures. Um, so the hyalur structure got, um, contains uh, a load of lymph nodes, um, but they shouldn't be um, present on an x-ray in normal health. So if you can see um, hyalur structures which are obstructing the carina or they're obstructing the aortic knuckle, you might be thinking that there um, is some um, lymphadenopathy, and lymphadenopathy could indicate there's some chest pathology going on um, or other pathology going on in the body. Um, also, if there's any asymmetry around this area as well, um, so this, uh, the hilar nodes um, are symmetrical. So if there's any asymmetry um, around this area, that also might indicate um, so hilar enlargement. So bilateral, um, bilateral symmetrical enlargement is normally associated with sarcoidosis, um, and unilateral asymmetrical enlargement may be due to an underlying um, malignancy. All right. 
Does that make sense? And I, I think they'd be very, they'd be very harsh to ask you about high lower enlargement, but it's just something to worth noting. Um, hi, sorry. Um, so, in on this X-ray, are the high lower normal? Yeah, that's it, yeah, high lower normal on this X-ray. Okay, just do you have any tips for just seeing when they are enlarged, um, or is it just judgment on seeing loads of X-rays? Uh, I think it's just seeing um, lots of X-rays. It's normally you want to see um, have a have a Google of like X-rays with um, like like big lung malignancies or um, with um, pathology like um, Hodgkin's lymphoma um, can really give you like big chest lymph nodes and so they're, they're good x-rays to maybe like Google. The, have you got any examples Liv that you can think of? I'm just trying to think. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, I guess you get quite a lot of hyla lymphadenopathy in TB so um, looking and that has quite a classic x-ray um, as well but I obviously don't have it too I think you get some in um, sarcoidosis. Yeah, yeah, sarcoidosis is a, is a good one because um, that's bilateral symmetrical enlargement. So you see mm -hmm. it on both sides. Sorry, I should have put one up on the PowerPoint. That's okay. I, I can Google it. Yeah. Cheers. So next, you want to move on to breathing. So what are we covering in breathing? The actual lung zones. Yeah, so the actual lung zones. Um, so how many zones um, have the lungs got in radiology? Three each. Yeah, three each. So um, a common um, pitfall is that people um, refer to um, lobes rather than zones. So in radiology, you want to be splitting both lungs into upper, middle and lower zones, whereas obviously... Um, Oh, you, I've just bear with me. It, the the, um, the left lung has three lobes, and the right lung only has um, two. Um, so don't get your lobes and zones mixed up. So you want to be um, looking at each zone in a systematic way. So some people like to do zigzags, or some people like to do a spiral. Whatever works for you. Um, and you want to be looking for any sign of um, something that look, just looks a bit off. So. The, the biggest tip for looking at x-rays is that, that other than like obviously the heart in the middle, both the lungs should look sh symmetrical. Um, so if there's something that doesn't um, look symmetrical, it's normally um, some pathology. So does anyone know what this arrow might be pointing to? Re really, really obvious. Um, sure. Is it like a tumor? Or? Yeah. So yeah. So this is this is a whopping big lung tumor, um, and that will be in the left middle zone. And then, so what does this picture show? Um, you've lost the lung markings in the left lung. Yeah. Uh, and the trachea is deviated. Yeah, great. So yeah, so again, trachea is slightly deviated, so that's giving an indication of what to look out for in a lung field. And then this whole left lung, is, you should be seeing lung markings um, all the way to the edges of the lung field. So on the right lung, you can see that there is lung markings all the way over to the um, edges of the lung fields. Whereas on the left, you've got these really dark spaces, and you can see this sort of what looks like a small mass, and that's actually the lung that's collapsed down. Um, so in health, you shouldn't actually be able to see the pleura of the lungs, but here you can just about see the double double layer of the pleura, um, and this shows um, probably a tension pneumothorax because you've got that lung deviation. So this would be um, a medical emergency, and you'd be looking to de um, decompress that lung fairly quickly. All right. Anyone have an idea what this picture shows? This one's a bit more tricky. Is it alveolar edema? Yeah, so that's that, that's what initially that's what I thought it was when I first looked at it. Um, but I think with uh, with pulmonary edema or al alveolar edema, um, it's a bit more um, concentric, um, and you don't get these hot spots. So if I if I tell you these are um, like calcification um, and pleural, then this would indicate pleural thickening. Would you 
would you anyone want to have a guess what that might indicate? Mesothelioma? Yeah, so this is mesothelioma. So this is a chest x-ray of someone that's been exposed to asbestos. And normally they're exposed about, on average, about 25 years before you get a chest x-ray like this. Um, so yeah, you sh like I said, you shouldn't be able to see the pleura. Um, and these, when you see these like hot spots um, lighting up, um, this shows um, that there's some um, pleural thickening. Um, and then you'd obviously want to take a thorough history and ask the patients if they've got any had any prior asbestos exposure, and then you can make the links and make a diagnosis of mesothelioma. All right, any questions on that? All right. So next we're going to move on to C. So C stands for cardiac. Um, so there's a couple of things that we can assess in um, C. Does anyone want to have a go at telling me what we're going to be looking for in cardiac? So the size of the heart, like the yeah. ratio of it compared to the size of the chest. Yeah, and what's what, what do we consider abnormal? It's over a third, isn't it, I think? Uh, so it's 50% of the thoracic width. Um, so um, the thoracic width is basically from here to here, if you can see my mouse. Mm. And if the heart is occupying more than 50% of the width, um, then that's what we consider um, cardiomegaly. Um, but you can only assess this on a PA film because on an AP film, the heart um, gets magnified. Um, and so you'll get a, um, you won't get an accurate um, picture of how big the heart is compared to thoracic wall, walls. Um, and is there anything else? So this, this is a heart that has got cardiomegaly. Um, and as you can see, there's a pacemaker here. And that, the pacemaker sort of gives you an indication that this person has got some sort of um, cardiac problems or cardiac failure which is why they may be suffering from um, cardiomegaly. So it's always worth with cardiac to mention any of the artifacts you, you can see. So um, like, for example, ECG leads, or if they've got a pacemaker, or if they've got um, an implantable defibrillator. These are all um, things that you should really be mentioning um, when you're covering C. Um, and then the other thing that you want to be um, making note of, so you may um, cover it in B, but some people like to cover it in C, is that you want to assess the heart borders. Now the heart borders, um, you should be able to, the heart borders should be nice, uh, clean and crisp. Um, if you're getting heart borders that are a bit blurry or the heart borders are um, asymmetrical, then that's when you want to be thinking that maybe some pathology is going on. So if there's loss of definition of the right heart border, that's associated with right middle lobe consolidation. And if there's loss of definition of the left heart border, um, that's associated with lingular um, consolidation. Any, does that, does that all make sense? Any questions on that? Um, so, yeah, and so Liv just said that I might want to clarify what the lingular is. So the lingular is just a, um, a little part of the lobe um, in the left lung. You're trying to test me now, Liv. <laughs> Sorry, Fraser. Yeah, I am. Um, so you may also want to include the aortic knuckle in um, cardiac, um, but we're going to cover that in everything else um, because that's how I've been taught to do it. But some people like to include the a aortic knuckle um, in C. All right. So can anyone, so obviously you'd next move on to D. So D stands for diaphragm. Does anyone know what this arrow is pointing at? Is it free air? Yeah, so this is free air underneath the diaphragm. So it can be normal on the right side, um, sorry, on the left side, um, and that's associated with a gas bubble um, in the stomach. But if you ever see um, free air, especially with like a sort of just straight line like that, um, that indicates that um, this patient's suffering from um, pneumoperitoneum, which is air in the um, uh, underneath the diaphragm, and that's being caused by a perforation of either the large or small intestines. Um, and that will be um, a surgical emergency and that person will need to go to um, theatre uh, very quickly. Um, there's a couple of other things you might be able to note about the diaphragm. You might get some flattening of the diaphragm um, in people who've got really um, severe COPD. 
Um, and you may also get some weird and wonderful things happening with the diaphragm. So I think this is a bit of a mean question that I thought was also quite interesting. Does anyone know, has anyone got any ideas what this might be? I asked Liv and Liv, Liv said it was a bit mean. Yeah, I got it wrong, so but don't worry if you also get it wrong. Is it like some sort of weird hernia? Yeah, so, I, so a hernia could look like that. So it's actually quite rare to get um, a hernia um, once you get into adult life. Um, diaphragmatic hernias are normally associated with um, newborn babies because their diaphragm hasn't developed properly. So it's, it's actually really difficult for adults to get it because a diaphragm is such a strong muscle. Um, this is, so I'm going to type it because I, I probably am pronouncing it wrong. Um, but basically, this is a syndrome um, that is called Chile Ditty. Oh, is that just said not to live? Chile, I think. Both me and Liv have had a go at pronouncing it, and we don't really know um, how to pronounce it. But I just thought it was um, something interesting um, to talk about. So this is a syndrome where basically the large intestines get trapped between the diaphragm and the liver. Um, and the only um, presentation would be um, diaphragmatic irrit irritation and pain. So the patient would be suffering from shoulder tip pain, and they'd be just getting some pain when they're breathing. Um, I just thought it was a bit of an interesting syndrome, but I, it's not something that you really need to know. I just thought it was interesting to put it in. Does anyone know what's going on here and what this picture might be indicating? Is that a sale sign? Yes, yeah, so I, I, I think there is a bit of a sale sign going on. Um, and then what do you think the costophrenic angles look like? Blunted. Yeah. So this is, um, this is a really good, uh, you see this quite a lot actually in a &E, that sometimes the only sign that you can see, the there might be very limited consolidation, but they'll have a blunted um, costophrenic angle. So if you see any um, blunting of the costophrenic angle, um, then that, there's, there's definitely um, something going on in, in, in the chest, be that pneumonia, there's some consolidation on there that's not really appearing on the x-ray, or you can see it in um, lung hyperinflammation hyperinflation um, in diseases like um, COPD um, and they basically just lose the angle because their diaphragms are that flat and that you, you, you just got no angle there but it's normally because there's some acute pathology going on like pneumonia and then and then we move on to everything else and unfortunately everything else is just like crammed with loads of like little things that you can be um, looking for so do you want to just go through, like, name some of the things that you might see um, that might be included in everything else? The bones, any like fractures? Yeah, and that, that's a really that's a really good one because um, people tend to overlook fractures when they're looking at chest X-rays, but um, you get really good views of the clavicle, and sometimes you even get views of the humerus as well. Um, so it's really worth noting if there's any fractures there, and then you might be able to see some rib fractures as well. The problem with rib fractures is that it, they don't really show up that well on chest x-rays. You're normally better seeing them on uh, CT chest if you suspect a rib fracture. Um, anything else you might um, see that you should mention and everything else? And soft tissue. Yeah, so you might see some soft tissue injury um, stuff like surgical emphysema can show up in chest x-rays as well. Um, and that would just look like loads of gas bubbles um, underneath the skin. So these arrows are pointed at the aortic knuckle. So this is a normal um, aortic knuckle. But if you lose definition around this aortic knuckle, that can um, indicate uh, an aortic aneurysm. Um, also as well, if the aortic knuckle um, looks enlarged, that could also indicate um, aortic um, aneurysm as well. Um, this arrow is pointing at the aorto um, pulmonary window, um, and you see the little triangle here. If that, um, if the definition of that triangle was lost, that can also um, indicate um, some mediastinal lymphadenopathy, so um, malignancy again. You've, we've mentioned bones, um, so like I said, rib fractures are quite difficult to see, but you might be able to see evidence of past rib fractures. So you might see like a circle calcification. 
um, indicating that they've had a past rib fracture, or you might be able to see some fractures in the clavicle or the um, humerus. Um, the in Oscars, they love to throw in stuff like um, if they've got a tube or uh, uh, or a nasal gastric tube. So just remember that if the tube looks like it's in the a, an ET tube will normally sit just above the carina, whereas nasal gastric tube you should be able to follow it all the way down into the stomach, and that's how you tell the um, tell them apart. Um, and yeah, and I think that's pretty much it in everything else, unless you can think of anything else, Liv. No, no, I think that's everything. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I've just got five cases and then that's it. We're done. Um, all right, hang on. Yeah, so this is, um, this is a chest x-ray of rib fractures that you can actually see um, where the arrows are pointing. That's quite a nasty rib fracture. Um, and you want to get rib fractures looked at too um, uh, pretty, pretty quickly because... Um, Rib fractures have got the capability of causing um, a pneumothorax. All right, so I don't mind if you want to put in a chat or if you want to unmute yourself, but how would you look at this x-ray if it was your Roski? Um, so I just... Go to the A B C D E and uh, not no E yeah E as well sorry um, yeah. initially it looks there's nothing obvious I can see initially um, looking at the airway the trachea looks central um, looking at the different zones of the lungs um, I think it's I can't see anything, although maybe in the lower left. Yeah. Uh, maybe a bit of consolidation down there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. The heart looks a normal size, and you can see the borders. Um, the diaphragm looks normal, and the costophrenic angles look normal. Uh, and I can't see any breaks. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, nice. I, I think you definitely would have picked a couple of marks in the OSCE um, for sure. Um, so, could I convince you that the costophrenic angle has been blunted here a bit on the left side? Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe. There's yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure what. Yeah, so this um, this is a picture of um, an atypical pneumonia. So you've got some bilateral consolidation. So you've got consolidation. So you've got a bit of um, blurring of the heart border on the right side here. Um, and then down here, you've got a lot of the costophrenic angle. And it's, it's just a bit more opaque than the other lung fields. Um, so this, okay. um, yeah, um, it, it can be, it, it's quite subtle, this one. Um, but you picked up that there was something funny going on on the left side. So you knew that this patient had some pathology going on. Um, and that's what the examiners are looking for. They, like, they want you to, um, they, they don't want you to give a, like, a complete, like completely like perfect like um, radiology report. They just want you to know, um, is this abnormal or is this normal? Like, are you going to be sending this patient home or are you not? So like, you picked up on the, like, the, the, the pathology, which is really good. Um, okay. So, so someone, someone else want to have a go at this one? I don't, don't worry if not, you can put it in the chat. Like, I know that's a lot of pressure to, to unmute yourself on Zoom. Um, I'll have a go. So um, starting with airway. Um, trachea, well, from here, it looks central, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it looks central. Um, do you agree or do you think it's slightly deviated? So I think um, it might be um, a little bit rotated. Okay. Okay. Um, I think this, this is, the, just from looking at the x-ray, this is probably someone who's quite unwell. So they've probably done this in the AP view. So it's probably a bit rotated, which is oh, why okay. the here looks a little bit off. Yeah, I think if you look at the collarbones of this person as well, it almost looks like they're lying down and they're 
shoulders are to their up to their ears almost. Um, yeah, yeah. So they're they're probably quite. I'm picturing like a very old, sick. I don't know why, like old, sick woman, probably not doing so well. Yeah. Phrase is right. It's probably a, an AP rather than a PA, but that's a very very good observation there. Okay, and then I'd have a look at like the hyla structures. So there seems to be like a lot of hyla lymphadenopathy. Yep. Um. So as you say, this is someone who's really unwell. Um, then going on to B for breathing. So having a look at the lungs, that looks like in all the zones there's quite a bit of consolidation. Yeah. Um, so I'd have a look at the pleura as well, inspect around the edges. I can't see any signs of collapse. Yeah, good. Um, then I would move on to looking at the heart size and it does look like there's a bit of cardiomegaly there. So possibly this patient's in heart failure. Yeah. Um, and then heart borders. I can see the claustrophrenic angles, um, but the heart borders are a bit slightly blurred, which would suggest maybe there's oedema, oedema there. Um, the diaphragm, I can't see any free air under the diaphragm. Um, and then you can see that she's got a, um, a pacemaker or some sort of implant. Um, so I would think that this was a patient in advanced stages of heart failure. Yeah, nice. Yeah, really good. Really good um, like systematic approach. Um, yeah, and you've got everything that really um, you need to get. Yeah, so um, it like we, like both me and Liv, Liv said, like um, this patient, um, this this extra was probably done in an AP view, which is why it probably looks a little bit rotated. Um, but other than the rotation, like inspiration, um, exposure, um, and uh, oh, I've forgotten P. How have I forgotten P? I'm having a nightmare there. Projection. Uh, a projection. Yeah. So. <laughs> So obviously the projection is going to be AP, but um, the inspiration and exposure is is fairly good in this patient. Um, in terms of airway, yeah, you're right. The career is, is probably central, but you couldn't tell on this extra because it looks rotated. So you could just say that I wouldn't be able to tell if the career was rotated, yeah, deviated. Um, and then, yeah, in the lung zones, there's, I'll just it just looks very um, congested. And this is um, poor medium. So, yeah, like you said, this is a patient in um, acute heart failure, and there's other like hints that gives that away, like pacemaker. Um, I don't think there's any signs of cardiomegaly. Um, okay. That it's uh, it's an it's an AP view, so it's difficult to um, assess. Yeah. Um, the only thing that um, is worth noting, I, I, I put these little um, examples in because I it's it, the, the good learning points so can you tell that there's been a bit cut off here yeah yeah so this can happen quite often um in x-rays that are taken in recess because you can't position the patient correctly or or the radiologist um is trying to quickly take the x-ray because the patient um is literally like take like um really struggling to breathe and um, so they've actually cut off the um, costophrenic angle on the left side. Oh, right, okay. Um, so it, it's a really subtle thing, um, but it's always some, sometimes just worth mentioning if the um, if you can't see all the structures that you should normally be able to see. Um, and I think the only other thing that you could mention is on everything else, there's some curly B lines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see them. Yeah, um, and they're actually quite good. You can't... The, the, you don't see curly B lines that often, so they're quite. That's quite a good um, picture to see them, see them in. All right, picture three. Um, we'll go. For, this one's quite a quick one. There's only sort of one abnormality in this. I'll have a go. Yep, yeah, go for it. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, the airway appears appears to be central. In terms of breathing, both uh, lung fields seem to be normal. No opacification seen yeah. on in any of the zones uh in terms of the heart it seems to be of normal size doesn't seem to be enlarged in terms of the diaphragm on the right hand side there's an obvious amount of free air underneath the diaphragm 
so suggesting pneumoperitoneum. And in terms of everything else, there seems to be no obvious fractures, lesions, masses, or tubes in place. Yeah, nice. That that, and I think this is something that they they would probably like to give you an Oski because um, it's they want you to pick that abnormality out, um, but also be able to present an X-ray in a systematic way. And and that's exactly what you did. Like you covered everything that you needed to cover. That was really good, and you picked out the. Um, the pathology so um just make sure to remember to um, mention about rotation inspiration um projection and exposure but it's difficult to remember that when um in like an artificial setting like this so, so don't worry about that yeah that was really good yes yeah, so this is just pneumoperitoneum uh so case four anyone want to have a go again this is relatively straightforward yeah so um, it seems like the clavicles might not quite be aligned. So it could be slightly rotated. Um, I think it's adequate inspiration and the projection's good. Um, and the, sorry, the projection, is it PA? Yeah, uh, yeah um, I, I, this is a PA, yeah. Yeah, and the exposure's fine. Um, the trachea doesn't look like it's so yeah in terms of the airway the trachea looks central um and there might be some slight hyla consolidation um in terms of the lung fields um there might be some consolidation in the left lower zone um and then in terms of the diaphragm, um, I don't know if there's maybe a little bit of free air under under the diaphragm on the right side. Um, oh yeah, and with respect to the heart, um, it seems like a good size, um, no cardiomegaly. Um, and the heart board is uh, obvious. Um, and there's no obvious bones or broke broken bones or anything else. Um, yeah, nice, nice, nice and um, systematic. Um, is there anything about the heart that you might want to mention about? You just say that it's shifted over to the right. Yeah, do you know what this condition is called? Just have interest. Extra cardia. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if they put something like this in an exam or something because um, they just want you to um, follow a systematic approach just in different situations. Um, so, yeah, you, you did that really well. Like um, you, you, rotation, inspiration, um, projection, and exposure all um, spot on. Um, yeah, airway trachea is like central. Um, in the lung zones, um, I think this is just uh, pulmonary vasculature rather than consolidation, and um, just because the heart borders are quite clear and crisp, um, okay. and there's no blunting of the costophrenic angle. So I think that's just more um, pulmonary vasculature um, rather than consolidation. Um, with the diaphragm, diaphragm, um, there is air under the diaphragm on the under the right side. But you'd have to take that with a pinch of salt because with dextrocardia, you can also get full sizes and versus um, and the stomach might be on the right side. It's a, it's a bit of a harsh one. Um, so, it, it, But I think that's probably more a stomach bubble um, than pneumoperitoneum. Um, but yeah, everything else, you got everything else. And that, that was really good. Uh, last one and then you're done and we can go and enjoy the sun. Anyone want to have a go? Does Liv want to have a go? <laughs> right, I don't want to take a learning opportunity from someone else. Don't you worry. <laughs> have you got anything that you want to mention? Like, have I missed anything, Liv? No, no, I think that's, this is really good. Um, yeah, I think taking on board everything Fraser said and kind of that emphasis on the systematic approach. And, you know, I always think whenever I present anything, I just take a few seconds to think about what I'm going to present. Um, 
and even if you look a bit strange in an Oski, you're just like sitting there for 10 seconds. I think it really helps. Um, and just going, making sure you're covering each line. So saying something about A, saying something about B, even if it's just, this is normal. Um, I think, yeah, that looks good. That's probably my biggest tip. But Fraser's basically like, he's, he's, he's far better at x-rays than I am. And he's, he's giving you all the, all the knowledge. I don't think I could add any more. <laughs> So is, is that thanks, Liv. Is that has anyone got uh, any ideas or want to go through presenting this? Uh, I'll I'll take another stab. Yeah. yeah, go for it. So the airway appears to be central and in the midline. In terms of the lung markings, there doesn't seem to be any obvious opacification across all of the zones. However, there does seem to be some sort of hilar lymphadenopathy on both sides. Uh, okay. In terms of the heart, it's quite difficult to fully visualize, but it does seem slightly enlarged in this scenario. Uh, the diaphragm seems to be flat and slightly blunt and slight blunt at the costophrenic angles, particularly on the left side. Yeah. And in terms of the aortic knuckle, it appears to be quite abnormal or there seems to be some sort of opacification around that area. Yeah. And is this um, is this the sale sign, the lower lobe pneumonia? On the yeah, left nice, side? yeah, 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 good. Yeah, so this is, um, yeah, it's a really good systematic approach um, and you picked out the, the important stuff, so yeah. So um, I wouldn't say the heart borders are enlarged just because, um, I think there's some consolidation around the heart borders, which may, might make look make the heart look like it's larger than it actually is. Um, but yeah, you you caught that there's a blunt and costophrenic angle on the left side, um, and the sale sign. So yeah, this is a left lower zone um, consolidation with the aortic knuckle. Um, so this bit here, that's calcification. So there's just some calcification of the aortic knuckle. But other than that, it's not. Um, it's not enlarged, um, it's just calcified, so it's probably someone, it's probably an extra quite um, an elderly person. Um, has anyone spotted anything else on everything else? Seems to be something near the aortic knuckle. S sorry? Seems to be like a, a circular thing near the aortic knuckle. Or am so I seeing things? So that is the um, like the aortic um, arch bending over. That that's, right, that's okay. what that's why it, it looks a little bit circular. Yeah. And and the 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 um, the outer rim of it is more visible just because of the calcification. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, if I told you there was a fracture, can anyone spot it? Is it just in the middle there, behind one of the, uh, between one of the vertebrae? Where, yeah. No, no. What that that line yeah. there? Yeah. No, I think that's just a uh, one of the um, vertebral bodies, um, just where like the 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 joint, um, the joint between um, two vertebral bodies. Oh, okay. Is it on so, the? Oh no, I was oh, going to say, is it on the right shoulder? <laughs> the right shoulder? No, I think it's just what, my screen. Yeah, I thought around there. What about on the left shoulder? I can't, oh, I have to move move you over, let me just see. Uh, am I blocking the left yeah. shoulder? Uh, um, I don't know. No, don't worry. So, um, so I think... Uh, this is a really good example. So there's, there's quite clearly, um, um, this guy's got uh, a pneumonia. He's got a left lower zone consolidation. Um, and there's a couple of things to mention, like the aortic calcification. Um, but there's a bit, this whole thing is distracting you because if you look um, here, can you see the proximal humeral fracture? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have spotted that. So no, to be fair, both me and Liv, like when we first looked at this, we couldn't spot the fracture. Um, it's only because I got this from Radiopedia and, it, and you get the radiology report afterwards. 
um, that it, it tells you that there's a fracture. Um, see, it's, it's a really good example that how like something in the chess field can distract you from looking at everything else. So that, that's why it's, it just like brings home the point that you should be using that systematic approach and just making sure that you check um, everywhere. Like, I don't think you'd fail a stage in an OSCE if you missed that, but it, it definitely just looks a bit more impressive if you can spot stuff like that. And don't forget as well, in, um, in real life, you'll have those context clues. So don't worry if you missed it, because obviously, yeah, the person who's got that kind of humoral um, fracture will probably at least mention some kind of, <laughs> or they might have some kind of history of the fall. It won't just be like an incidental, oh, you know. Um, so don't worry if you, if you didn't spot it, because, yeah, we didn't spot it either until yeah. some time. So as an F1, would we be expected to sign off x-rays or would we ask a senior to check them or what would be the the process so, i'd have sent that patient home so so, so what what normally happens is um well it, especially in the a and e department so the juniors will um be the first people to look at the x-ray um but they will normally present it to the consultant um and but how on a, on a ward um you won't normally um, the consultant's not always going to be around, so you might have to act on an X-ray without the consultant. Um, so if you if this X-ray appeared um, on the ward, um, the F1 would be expected to start antibiotics. But if they missed this X-ray, um, uh, missed the fracture, it wouldn't be a big deal because um, X-rays get reviewed by um, radiologists um, okay. after about three or four days. So the, what, what's best practice to do is the junior doctor will type their findings um, on the notes of the x-ray and then a couple of days later the radiologist will, will report it um, and if, if they note that the junior has missed something then they'll flag it up. So um, what, what you're expected to do as an F1 is to catch the obvious stuff like these subtle stuff but that's for the radiologists. Okay. Would you, would you agree Liv? Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I think it tends, I mean, it depends on where you are. If you're at a district district general, um, you're more likely to maybe have to action stuff a bit quicker on your own. Um, but then obviously every, every trust has a different policy. I know that um, I'm at Aintree this year and F1s um, are asked to present x-rays to a senior, usually like a registrar um, in the department. Whereas an ECG, they can sign them off. So it depends on what kind of data, what kind of imaging you're doing or what the procedure is as well. Um, but yeah, just in terms of x-rays, they wouldn't have, a, if you missed the, the fracture, one, you'd probably have that context clue, so you'd be looking out for it. But if you missed it, it's not as, as annoying as it would be. You'd probably already have started some kind of analgesia. So there's not much, I don't think there'd be kind of a, a big problem with you missing it. And like Fraser said, it would get pulled up by the radiologist. Whereas um, to the pneumonia and the sale sign, sometimes radiologists are quicker in some departments than others, depending on how busy they are. So they might even have reviewed that within the day. Um, but you can always, if you're feeling unsure, just asking somebody next to you like, oh, you know, yeah. does that look all right? Um, and then I guess also just more exposure to it because I don't think we have that much x-ray teaching, I would say compared to the other universities. Um, and I just found for me this year, and probably more, I'll find it again in fifth year when you're back on ward shadow, like it's just having that repeated exposure, learning what's normal and learning that kind of like eyeball test, like does this look okay? And that will probably help too. But don't worry about it now, you've got loads of time. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that, that's, um, that's everything. Um, Feel free to ask any questions, but um, thanks for listening. I know that the weather's really nice, so I'm, um, I'm, I hope that you guys got something out of it. Yeah, yeah I did. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Can I just no ask, worries. the right diaphragm, like under it, it looks like there are kind of two different densities. Yeah, you're right. Like what? what is that? So uh, obviously, um, uh, I'm not a radiologist, but I'll give it a go that I think what that'll be is, you know how the diaphragm, it, it's, a, it's a dome shape, but um, the back of the dome is lower than the front of the dome, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I, th I think the line that you can see here is the back of the diaphragm that attaches mm -hmm. um, to the, 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 basically the, the, the vertebrae at the back. And then this is the front part of the diaphragm that attaches to the, the front of the body. That, that, that would what, why I think you're seeing two different densities, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm.
Um, they, this was um, left lower consolidation, or can you say it's collapse? Uh, it's left lower zone consolidation, and uh, just with the, with the sale sign. Um, you, it'd be diff I don't think there is any evidence of collapse. And when I looked at the radiology report, it didn't say there was any collapse. Okay. So I've only I've heard the sale sign in relation to collapse. Uh, it, but I guess does it just look similar? But would it be? Uh, uh, go on. Can you answer that question, Liv? Because I I know that. Sorry. Can... Uh, do you do you associate the sale sign with collapse, Liv? Um. Yes. No. Like I would if I saw the sale sign, I would I would think it. The, the kind of the first condition I'd think of would be collapse, but it's a difficult one because it's quite hard to actually say, I think, especially at our level, that that something is definitively collapse. And whereas consolidation, I think, allows for more, I don't know, I think if consolidation could be a whole host of other things, whereas collapse, I think you're, you're being quite specific. So I, I was taught it as sale sign being a left lower well a lower lobe collapse but then but but with the kind of caveat that it could be a lot of other things as well because i think you do get some site some sale aspects of a sale sign in um like pneumonia um and in not heart failure what else can you get in there's something else that i wrote down in my notes um let me have a look now i'm gonna meet myself while i have a, a look i guess just anything with the left lower lobe would look like a sale if it includes all of it yeah 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 i mean this might not be i on the radiology report it didn't say that it was a sale sign but i both me and liv thought that it did look like a sale sign um yeah. but on on like I've, I've just quickly googled it and like it is normally associated with um left lower low um left low zone um collapse but um it didn't say anything about collapse on this report so i I think what Liv says uh, is a really good point that if you if you say consolidation, you're not wrong. Um, if you want to ri risk it and show off and say that it's collapse, um, go for it. That like you won't be wrong if you say consolidation. Yeah, I think I, I think I would say collapse and then risk it. But but I also I mean that I don't know if that's always a good tactic, but that's that's me. Um, <laughs> that's a very good question. Yeah, has anyone got any more questions? No, uh, well, thanks for listening, guys. Like, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah, no that was good. Well Fraser. Uh, <laughs> If it's all right, I'm just gonna, I'll post some feedback on the event. Um, I'd really appreciate it if you could just um, fill it in for me. Yeah. 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 Cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Bye.